Don't you just hate it that on that one day that you've got to go into the office, there's no desks, nowhere to work from? Don't worry, Microsoft's got you covered with bookable desks. Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Mo Mondays. In this week's special episode, I am continuing the theme of BYOD and Microsoft Teams rooms and kind of the whole Teams estate that Microsoft is now starting to build. Uh, I speak a lot on this channel about Microsoft Teams rooms, i.e. the native Teams room solution. In one of the recent episodes, I spoke about BYOD, but that one space we were missing is bookable desks or hot desk gear. And it depends where you are in the world. People call them different things. Uh, here in Europe, generally they call hot desks. Uh, in other countries, they may be called other things. Uh, but for today, I'm gonna call them bookable desks. Now, usually the biggest challenge that we get is when you rock up to the office, and it happens to me all the time, I live like, central UK. So everything is like two hours away from me. But as soon as I get to the office, I walk into the office and all the desks are taken up, right? Um, we're seeing less dedicated desks now. So as time, times have moved on since COVID and, and organizations are now rejigging the way the office looks, what, what we're essentially seeing is all of those traditional desks that we used to have, you know, the ones that, you know, you decorate and have a picture of your dog or your family and it had your little name badge on it, that desk, is no more. We're seeing organizations actually transform those spaces into more kind of meeting room spaces or social areas um, and creating uh, bookable or hot desk areas so that people can rock up to the office as and when required. But there's always gonna be a case where you do need to go into the office and you do need a dedicated desk to work from. It's not always gonna be in shared areas. And the challenge that, uh, as I've mentioned, that I have is I rock up to these offices and there's no desks. Um, because people have got there before me, I might have been delayed on the train or the plane or whatever it may be, and I've got to find somewhere which is not really ideal. Now, the challenge that we get inside of office spaces is you want to get that same experience, that same great experience that we're so used to using at home. At home, we've got, you know, big monitors, uh, we've got cameras, we've got great audio visual, you walk up to the office and you don't always get that solution. But as organizations have started kitting out their hot desk environments, they're now starting to bring uh, some really good devices. Many of our OEMs, um, you know, out there have great monitors. Uh, they've got monitors with integrated cameras, there's monitors with cameras, mic speakers all built in. There's a whole range of different devices out there and we're starting to see more and more of them. Um, so what is Microsoft doing in this space? I'll make it easy. Let me shoot straight over onto the uh, PowerPoint presentation uh, and I'll show you exactly how that works. What we're seeing across here is the nirvana of office spaces, right? And we're hoping that if you do have a Microsoft Teams house, that hopefully this is what your office estate is starting to look like. We've got all your native Teams rooms, your tra traditional Teams rooms. Uh, you may have, you know, a few BYOD uh, type rooms as well. And then you've got those bookable shared work desks. Now, one thing you'll notice is the lack of dedicated desks. We're seeing less and less dedicated desks now in office spaces. You know, ever since COVID kicked in and everyone's been trying to return to work or being forced back to return to work, um, we're seeing organizations rip out those dedicated desks. And when I say dedicated desks, I'm talking about those desks that, you know, were personal to you. It was your desk, your chair, you had your little name badge on it, you decorated it with your little plant and all of that good stuff. Those desks are no more. Organizations are now ripping them all out and actually creating more social spaces uh, or creating meeting rooms um, because they're starting to know that not many people will do Monday to Friday, nine to five at the same desk. Um, so there's know that people will come into the office as and when required, but there still is a need to have dedicated workspaces for people to actually like do their emails or maybe they don't want to talk to anyone else and just want to get some work done. That's where the sh shared work desks or the hot desks really come in. Now, yes, there are solutions out there from third parties that allow you to create bookable solutions. Uh, and they're great, don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking any of them. However, it's an additional investment. You, you know, there may be challenges to integrate it within your infrastructure. There's a whole range of different things. And organizations are now starting to move uh, more and more towards a single solution, just using Teams and the Microsoft platform to effectively control everything from meeting rooms to BYOD rooms uh, to bookable shared work desks. And, uh, you know, luckily enough for me, Microsoft gave me a sneak preview in terms of what they are doing in the bookable uh, shared space. Uh, so let me show you how that um, actually works. When we look at bookable desks, 
it's very, very easy. Um, most organizations, as they're creating those hot desking areas, will have, you know, nice widescreen monitors there. You know, hopefully they've got a bit of budget because then they put, uh, you know, good quality webcams up. Um, there may be a headset, there may be, you know, speaker phones, wherever it may be. There's peripherals there connected to a dock. Uh, and then all you would do is you'd simply walk, walk in with your laptop and you just plug in and that will provide charge. But more importantly, we'll connect to all the peripherals that are there uh, inside uh, of that workspace area. Um, so it's designed to be super, super uh, simple. Let me run you uh, a little video and show you how easy it is. I basically get into the office, I say hi to the receptionist, I walk up to the uh, shared workspace, and all I do is I just plug in that single USB-C cable. As Soon as I plug in that USB-C cable, if I have already reserved this desk by using Outlook, um, then it will pop up within Teams on the activity tab, or it will pop up from the bottom, depending on uh, the notification settings that you've, pot up, uh, pop, that you've set up. And it will say, hey, this desk is reserved for you until 5 p.m. or whatever, and you're good to go. Um, if you haven't reserved it, it will actually notify you and say, hey, this desk is reserved for somebody else. And I'll show you some screenshots a little later on. Uh, and then, of course, you have to get up and move and find uh, another desk. Um, but what will also happen later in the year as well um, is Microsoft will be able to up actually update your location. So um, you can right now today, if you're using the new Outlook, so you know how you got new teams, the little toggle switch, you've got the same for Outlook. Uh, I used it last year. It wasn't as polished as as it, as it is now last year, but I've been using it for like the last four months now and it's been spot on, you know, all the new features come across there. But if you're using that new Outlook, it actually gives you the option to set where you're located, right? So you can be at home or you can be remote or in the office, whatever it may be. Um, later this year, when you plug into a shared space, it will automatically update your status and your space and, and say, ah, you know, Mo's in the office. Uh, so that's really good. That comes out a little later on this year. As soon as I get uh, notified um, uh, as to when that's going to release, I'll, of course, share that uh, on LinkedIn and on my socials as well. Um, so, yeah, this video, it's easy, right? You know, this is how easy it actually is. You, you, you go in, you rock up, you plug in, and away you go. Now, the good thing about having these bookable workspaces is the simple fact that one, as an IT administrator, you can now asset track because one of the challenges that we have, not just in meeting rooms, but especially in workspaces is peripherals go missing. Somebody will be like, ah, that dock looks really good or that camera is amazing. I'm gonna take that and I'm either gonna use it at home or I'm gonna put it on you know, eBay or somewhere you know, like that. And we have actually seen them in real life scenarios. But more importantly, from an IT administrative uh, point of view, it's not just the asset tracking, but it's insights, it's analytical data. That will be coming out later this year. I don't have a confirmed date just yet. Um, as soon as I do, I will, of course, you know, update you and let you know. But just like in BYOD rooms, you will be able to start as an IT administrator, be pulling off data in, in, in terms of what's happening with those workspaces. How many people are using them, you know, what the usage data looks like, depending on the devices that are connected as part of that workspace, you'll get called quality analytics as well. So if you're plugged into your laptop, you're running a Teams call and that Teams call was really bad and it flags up to say, ah, it was a microphone, you know, maybe you need to replace that headset or maybe it's the camera that wasn't working too well. Maybe Ethernet cable is damaged or whatever it may be, you're able to actually go ahead and do that. That comes out a little later this year um, as well. So how do you actually set this up? Really, really easy. PowerShell. Now, you all know how much I love PowerShell, but actually it's not too hard to do uh, it here. The great thing is, you don't have to create a resource account for every single hot desk. You only create a resource account for a bank of desks, which is what we call workspaces. So for example, if you have eight desks in a row, that's a workspace. You would create a resource account for that workspace. Um, if you know how to create a room resource account, you can absolutely create a workspace account. It's exactly the same way. Fire up PowerShell. Instead of um, you know the, the mailbox, when you set up the resource mailbox, instead of setting that to room, you now set that up as workspace instead. Make sure you set the enforced capacity to true and then follow the rest of the options. I'll drop a link down below that gives you all the scripts and you know what you need to type in. It's on a learn.microsoft.com webpage, you know, just like the uh, MTRs as well. Uh, very, very easy to follow. Um, but remember, you know, uh, Microsoft would recommend like eight desks per workspace. You know, anything bigger than that just becomes a bit more harder to maintain. So around eight desks is the eight, eight, eight devices is the magic number. So create uh, workspace accounts 
for your banks of desks. Hopefully I've made that clear. Once you've created that workspace account, the next challenge is how do you bring the devices in? How do you tell PMP or Pro Management Portal that these, uh, um, the, these hot desks, these hot desks are, God, I'm losing it today, right? These hot desks are assigned to this workspace account. And again, Microsoft's done a really, really good job here as well. The number one way to do it is actually by using Microsoft's tool. So Microsoft has created this great little PowerShell script tool, uh, which is available today, actually. It's live. Again, I'll drop the link down below. It takes you through to a learn.microsoft.com webpage again. Um, and the idea is, is when you're installing your devices, uh, so when you're, when you're creating these hot desks, the installer should have that script on their own laptop. And all you do is you run the script when you plug into the monitor or the devices and it will scan it and it will uh, basically kick you out a report at the end of it, which you can then import into Pro Management Portal. Let me show you how that works. Really, really easy. You make sure that you have the, um, the script, load up the script. It will say, OK, now create your BYOD um, uh, uh, devices. Uh, and then once you create, uh, once you've connected your BYOD devices, the script will essentially scan and pull off any data from serial numbers to PIDs or device IDs or device type, etc. And then what, what it will do is it will create a CSV file, change that CSV file to a traditional Excel document. OK, so here you go. You see it on screen. It's picked up a HP Z27 uh, a monitor, which is a great monitor, by the way. Uh, change it from a CSV to an Excel document and then fire up the Pro Management Portal. Once you fire up the Pro Management Portal, you then go ahead and import. Um, and then once you've imported, you'll be able to actually find those devices there. Now, if you didn't notice it already, and again, let me let me run the video one more time for you uh, and show you. Uh, if you didn't notice, while it was trying to actually go ahead and scan for all of the devices, it gave you the option to say, "Hey, what is the what is the account that you want to assign it to?" Right. So, uh, so you see, in this case, it says BYOD room account. It's actually the workspace account. You enter that workspace account details uh, and the grouping ID, whatever it may be, uh, the BYOD account display name, and it will actually add it into that Excel document in the right format. So then, when you do import it into Pro Management Portal, you don't have to then assign it to a workspace account. It does it automatically because it knows what you're doing. Um, so this tool is the number one way to go ahead and actually bring in your devices. Uh, option number two, again, is a, is a manual way of doing it. Option number two is actually going old school and having an Excel document and having somebody go around to every single desk and get the serial numbers and then fill out all the information. Uh, the challenge that you get with doing it this way is you need to first make sure you've got the right fields. So Pro Management Portal understands it. Um, and then uh, the challenge then uh, becomes is trying to get to the back of a device to find serial numbers, right? But 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 that is another way that you can you can absolutely hopefully you've already got you know inventory and you've got serial numbers somewhere, so it should be easier uh, for you to import. But the tool is better, the tool is easier. Um, there is one more way. The third way of uh, of actually doing it is is by doing it by organic means, which basically means what the Pro Management Portal will do is it will automatically detect devices. So once the fifth user connects to these BYOD spaces or connects to these uh, workspaces, once that fifth user connects to it, it will basically query or ping the Pro Management Portal. And then under the inventory tab, we'll start listing all of these devices it's discovered. Uh, and then you as an IT administrator then need to go ahead and assign that um, device that is discovered to a workspace account. If you've got a small business, it's easy enough, it will work. If you've got a large organization with multiple offices and a ton of different devices, this is where it can get a little challenging because then how do you identify that that Dell screen is in building one or is it in building three? It becomes a little challenge, which is why I would recommend, Microsoft also recommend, use the tool. Get, get, get somebody out there with the tool, run the tool, uh, and it will pull off all the information uh, that's required. Um, okay, so once it's already assigned it, it will then show up in Pro Management Portal under a new tab called Desks. So you've got Rooms, BYOD, if you've got BYOD rooms, and then you'll have desks as well. Devices is just all the devices. Um, so now that you've got desks, you will then see the workspace account. So in this case, you'll see, I don't know, neighborhood 21C. There's eight desks there. It's got a resource account uh, uh, attached to it. And then for those eagle eyed guys, you'll notice it also has a license. Just like in BYOD, 
If you don't assign a license to it, this is as far as you get. It will bring up inventory. You can assign it to a, a resource account and that's it. That's pretty much it. Uh, in the future, so later this year, Microsoft will then uh, light up all the analytical data, all the reports. So when you then assign that Teams device uh, or that Teams shared device license, uh, which is the $8 a month license to that workspace account, it will then start populating within PMP all the reports, the call quality, the usage data, et cetera, depending on the devices that are connected across there. But that comes later this year. Of course, I'll share those details as soon as um, it becomes public and we know exactly uh, when it's coming. Uh, but this is really easy, really straight. And then now you're starting to build up what your Teams estate actually looks like, not just with Teams rooms, not just with BYOD, but also those bookable shared workspaces um, as well, or hot desks. So once you've uh, assigned a device to a workspace, what does it look like in action? Now, a user can use Outlook or Teams and actually book that space, right? So just like booking a room, you would search for the desk or uh, use Room Finder or, or Spaces. So ho hopefully all of this will start coming into Spaces as well. Uh, you find the desk that you want, you go ahead, you book it for the time that you need it. When you walk into the office and you plug in that device, it will come up and it will say, hey, this space is reserved and ready for you. This is one that you've done earlier, right? So this is one that I've booked from home before I actually uh, went to the office. Really, really easy. Um, in, this, in this next one across here, actually, let me go back a step. This screen, I've said it wrong. This screen is the one that will book it ad hoc. So if you haven't booked this uh, desk already, and if no one's using it and it's not been reserved, it will then say this space has been reserved and ready for you. And it's reserved until 5 p.m. or until whatever the next booking has been made. If you've already booked it in advance, you'll then just get this, you're all set with this reservation. It's reserved until 5 p.m., etc., and you're good to go. However, if you um, walk up to a desk, you've not booked it in advance and somebody else has booked it, it will actually pop up and it will say, hey, this desk is uh, reserved for somebody else what time it will be available. And obviously you'd need to get up and then just connect to another another screen um, uh, somewhere else. Really easy, really straightforward. So there you have it, bookable desk from Microsoft. Pretty straightforward to do. Uh, I think it's a great idea because now it fits with that wider story around having a Teams estate. Uh, and I can't wait for it to start going live with things like the analytical data, because then, you know, from a reseller perspective or even a customer perspective, six, 12 months down the line, you're able to actually look at that data that comes from BYOD rooms, from Teams rooms, from, from bookable shared spaces, and then make those commercial decisions in terms of, hey, do we need to upgrade? Do we need to upgrade to native Teams rooms? Do we need to have better devices? Are we experiencing any issues? Uh, it gives you a lot more data there to make those uh, strategic decisions uh, moving forwards. As always, guys, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Uh, and uh, no doubt I shall see you for the next episode. Ciao.